Inflation is a very serious subject. You can argue that it's the way democracies die. When democracy dies in Latin America, inflation is a big part of it. So it's a huge danger once you've got a populace that learns it can vote itself money. If you overdo it too much, you ruin your civilization a lot. But of course, it's a big, long-range danger. If you look at the Roman Republic, even after they went to an empire with an absolute ruler, they inflated the currency steadily for hundreds of years. And eventually, the whole damn Roman Empire collapsed. So it's the biggest long-range danger we have, probably, apart from nuclear war. I think the safe assumption for an investor is that over the next hundred years, the currency is going to zero. That's my working hypothesis. A very dangerous environment. What brought in Hitler was the combination of the Weimar inflation, where they utterly destroyed the savings of the middle class in Germany, followed by the Great Depression. It was a one-two punch. And Hitler came in, crazy demagogue, with 40% of the votes, and pretty soon we had a dictator hell-bent for world war. So the history is not pleasant. And Germany was a very advanced and civilized nation, the Germany that Hitler took over. So if you let your nation deteriorate too much, what you get is a Hitler. We proved it. When you print money on the scale that modern nations are printing it, Japan, the United States, Europe, etc., we're getting into new territory in terms of size. There's never been anything quite like what we're doing now. And we do know from what's happened in other nations, if you try and print too much money, it eventually causes terrible trouble. And we are closer to terrible trouble than we've been in the past, but it may still be a long way off. I certainly hope so. When Volcker, after the 70s, took the prime rate to 20 percent and the government was paying 50 percent on its government bonds, that was a horrible recession. It lasted a long time, caused us a lot of agony. And I certainly hope we're not going there again. I think the conditions that allowed Volcker to do that without an interference from the politicians were very unusual. And I think in 2020 hindsight, it was a good thing that he did it. I would not predict that our modern politicians will be as willing to permit a new Volcker to get that tough with the economy and bring on that kind of a recession. So I think the new troubles are likely to be different from the old troubles. You may wish you had a Volcker-style recession instead of what you're going to get. The troubles that come to us could be worse than what Volcker was dealing and harder like, to fix. Think of all the Latin American countries that print too much money. They get strongmen and so forth. That's what Plato said happened in the early Greek city-state democracies. One person, one vote, a lot of egality, and you get demagogues, and the demagogues lather up the population, and pretty soon you don't have your democracy anymore. I don't think that was... A crazy idea on Plato's part. I think that accurately described what happened in Greece way back then, and it's happened again and again and again in Latin America. We don't want to go there. At least I don't. We've done something pretty extreme, and we don't know how bad the troubles will be, or whether we're going to be like Japan or something a lot worse. And what makes life interesting is we don't know how it's going to work out. I think we do know we're flirting with serious trouble. I think we also know that some of our earlier fears were overblown. Japan is still existing as a civilized nation, in spite of unbelievable excess by all former standards in terms of money printing. Think of how seductive it is. You have a bunch of interest-bearing debts, and you pay them off with checking accounts, which you're no longer paying interest. Think of how seductive that is for a bunch of legislators. Get rid of the interest payments and the money supply goes up. Seems like heaven. And, of course, when things get that seductive, they're likely to be overused. If you stop to think about it, if you're going to invest in stocks for the long term or real estate, of course there are going to be periods when there's a lot of agony and other periods when the, there's a boom. And I think you just have to learn to live through them. And Kipling said, treat those two imposters just the same. You have to deal with daylight and night. Does that bother you very much? No. Sometimes it's night and sometimes it's daylight. Sometimes it's a boom, sometimes it's a bust. I believe in doing as well as you can and keep going as long as they let you. We have a hugely strong economy and a hugely strong technical civilization. And that's not going away. And the knowledge and so forth. And you can't believe what a modern factory looks like when you fill it with robots. And that's coming more and more and more. And it's coming to China, too, for that matter. 
And so those trends are inevitable. And I don't know how it's all going to play out, but I think it does create adjustment problems. If you have a fine unionized job and they replace you with a robot, you've got a difficult problem. And if you've got a company like Kodak and they invent something new that obsoletes your product, you have a problem too and you solve that by dying. A lot of people don't like that solution. Because all those problems are real and because it's so tempting to get rid of your debt by just giving a guy a non-interest bearing checking account where you used to have to pay him interest every month, not only do we have a serious problem, but the solution to it that is the easiest for the politicians and for the Federal Reserve, too, for that matter, is just to print more money and solve the temporary problems that way. And that, of course, is going to have some long-term dangers. And we know what happened in Germany when the Weimar Republic just kept printing money. The whole thing blew up, and that was a contributor to the rise of Hitler. So all this stuff is dangerous and serious. And we don't want to have a bunch of politicians just doing whatever is easy on the theory that it didn't hurt us last time so we can double it and do it one more time. And then we double it again and so forth. We know what happens on that everlasting doubling, doubling, doubling. You will have a very different government if you keep doing that enough. You're flirting with danger somewhere uh, unless there's some discipline in the process. But I don't regard Japan as in some terrible danger. I mean, they gave down a huge amount of this and gotten by with it. I don't think we'll be as good at handling our problems as Japan is. In my whole adult life, I've never hoarded cash waiting for better conditions. I've just invested in the best thing I could find, and I don't think I'm going to change now. And the Daily Journal's used up its cash. Now, Berkshire has excess cash, quite a bit of excess cash. But it's not doing that because it thinks it knows how to time investments. He just can't find anything it can stand buying. So we don't have a solution to your problem. We're just coping with it, as I've described. The reason we're not buying this, we can't buy anything at prices we're willing to pay. It's just that simple. Other people are bidding the price up. And a lot of the buying is not by people who really plan to own them. A lot of it is fee-driven buying. Private equity buys things so they can have more fees by having more things under management. Of course, it's a lot easier to buy something you use somebody else's money. We're using our own money, or at least that's the way we think of it. The shareholders who are worried about the future because it looks complicated, difficult, and they're hazard, I want to say to them what my old torch professor said to me, Charlie. He'd say, Charlie, tell me what your problem is, and I'll try and make it more difficult for you. And he did me a favor by treating me that way. And I'm just repeating his favor you. When you're thinking the thoughts you're doing, at least you're thinking in the right direction. You're worried about the right things. All you people that are worried about the inflation and the future of the Republic. So, of course, in a modern democracy in the age of Keynes, you're going to get big government reaction. The reaction this time was bigger than it's ever been before in the history of the United States. They just threw money at the problem and they were probably right to fear what was going to happen and to be quite liberal in throwing money at it, but they probably overdid it a little. They threw so much money so fast that it's hard for the restaurants to get people to do the work. But I don't criticize it. It's hard to make these decisions under pressure. Well, you have to be optimistic about the competency of our technical civilization. But there again, it's an interesting thing. If you take the last 100 years, 1922 to 2022, most of modernity came in in that 100 years. And in the previous 100 years, that got another big chunk of modernity. And before that, things were pretty much the same for the previous thousands of years. Life was pretty brutal and short, limited, and what have you. No printing press, no air conditioning, no modern medicine, no. I don't think we're going to get things that were in what I call the real human needs. Think of what it meant to get, say, first you got the steam engine, the steamship, the railroad, and a little bit of improvement in farming and a little bit of improvement in plumbing. That's what you got the 100 years that ended in 1922. The next 100 years gave us widely distributed electricity, modern medicine, the automobile, the airplane, the records, the movies, the air conditioning in the South. And think what a blessing it was. If you wanted three children, you had to have six because three died in infancy. That was our ancestors. Think of the agony of watching half your children die. 
It's amazing how much achievement.